Thank you for tuning in to the Into the Classroom series produced by Mental Health California, sponsored by Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Into the Classroom, which is a student mental health awareness multimedia series produced by Mental Health California. I'm your host, Conrad Crump, also known as Coach Crump, and today's topic is on juggling too much and finding balance and minimizing stress. Now, in this life, young folks are often responsible for many different things, and we know that juggling too much can have detrimental effects on the mental health and well-being of high school and college students. Students can find balance and minimize stress in a number of different ways. One, by recognizing the impact of overwhelming responsibilities. Two, by implementing effective time management strategies. Three, by setting realistic time limits. And four, by prioritizing self-care. So today we'll talk about everything from academic demands to extracurricular activities, part-time jobs and social commitments to the pressure to excel in every aspect of life, which can take a toll on student mental well-being. We'll also explore clinical and holistic solutions to help bring down the volume. Today, we're fortunate to have with us a wonderful clinician named Luz Guzman. Luz is a licensed marriage and family therapist at hearyou.org who supports Latinx youth and their families. She addresses stress, anxiety, and depression in college students and self-esteem and self-compassion concerns. Luz also supports parents and family members navigating complex trauma and various community systems. Welcome, Luz. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. And we're also joined by our youth guest today. Today, I'd like to welcome Lucy Lebeck of El Cerrito High School. How are you doing, Lucy? Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. And I'd also like to introduce Erica Pham from Mira Loma High School. Hello, Erica. Hi. Thank you for having me again. Awesome. And I'd also like to introduce Monica Tamayo from UCLA. Welcome, Monica. Hi, thank you. Happy to be here. Wonderful. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to welcome Joel Suazo, who is a Brother Be Well contributor and student at Los Angeles City College. And today, Joel joins us as a youth mentor to our younger guests and listeners. How are you doing, Joel? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great too. Wonderful. So now that we're all here, and um, I really am anticipating a wonderful discussion today, but before we get into our conversation, I'm wondering if Luz, our LMFT, can provide maybe just some brief clinical insights into managing busy schedules among the many pressures of being a student. Luz? Yes. So we are definitely seeing there's pressures from everywhere, school, work, personal lives, just everything. Um, it's this thing in society, right, where we're expected just to do more. Um, often what we're noticing, right, is we really got to get back to basics. So self-care, which we talked we talked about a little bit in the intro, um, sleeping, those basic habits that are not so basic, right? Because they're hard. Um, really getting those down and just prioritizing going back and using things like planners, right? Or doing things on Google Calendar and just sort of seeing, right? Like what is the most important thing that needs to get done today and what can wait maybe for later? Yeah, that's that's great. That's great advice and some good tips in there. Um, you know, 
I'd actually like to turn it over to our youth right now. And I'd like to ask, uh, just by a show of hands, is there anyone here who has dealt with or is currently dealing with just having too much on their plate? Yep, I, I was right. I was going to guess that I think everyone's going to raise their hand, and we all did. And clearly, we're not alone. I'm sure there's some folks even in our audience who probably raised their hand as well. Um, so let's go ahead and go into our slide presentation to go further in on this topic. So being overwhelmed with responsibilities, I mean, it's almost like the norm, you know, um, when students have an excessive number of responsibilities on their plates, it can lead to various negative consequences. Now, research shows that high levels of stress can impair cognitive function, hinder academic performance and negatively impact physical health. Juggling too much can also contribute to feelings of anxiety, depression, and burnout, which can force students to find other ways to manage their stress. And we're hoping that we can help them to find ways to manage their stress effectively and in a healthy manner. Let's move on to our next slide. Now, there's also huge societal and academic pressures as well. You know, the pressure for students to do well in their studies, to secure internships, as well as the pressure to build impressive resumes, um, you know, whether it's community service or other things that they want to put down, um, you know, all of this can create a culture of comp competition and perfectionism. You know, additionally, there's this fear of missing out or FOMO, as the young folks call it. And, you know, additionally, there's the constant need to be connected through social media, which can also add to the already overwhelming responsibilities that students already face. Now, let me ask some of our youth here. Um, I'd like to just randomly go to Monica. Monica, do you ever get FOMO or do you ever feel a need to be connected with friends through social media? And if so, can you maybe talk to us about that? Uh, yeah, I, I have in the past, like I've been getting better at um, managing my time with my friends like online. But I, um, in, in the past, I was always like attached to my phone, like as soon as I got that notification, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to respond um, because I felt like I had a duty to my phone and those notifications. Like um, I can't see those numbers on my phone because then that would give me like a sort of anxiety until I realized like it's a little ridiculous that I'm paying that much attention to those notifications. And I started silencing the notifications, putting them on like sleep mode. Um, and then I even talked to my friends like, hey, you know, I may like open it, but I won't reply right away. And that doesn't mean like I don't want to respond. It just means like um, right now I I don't have the time and they understood. So I think that's what helped me just communicating to them that I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just have other things to prioritize at the moment and not like in the mean way, but just like, you know, like school academics and they understood because they're going through the same thing. That's good. And that's really cool that they were understanding, too. That's awesome. Uh, let me go to another one of our youth here, maybe someone who's in high school. Uh, how about you, Lucy? Any FOMO or desire to connect through social media? Um, I have. So a couple months ago, I deleted my last social media and it was Be Real. But when I went into freshman year, I watched a documentary about social media and how it impacts youth and after that day I just deleted everything and for a lot of time I had I had like withdrawals and I would like think about posting things and think about sharing my life and like I just I had that impulsive need to because that's what I you know that that's what I knew and over time it just faded away and now it's I don't really get FOMO from social media. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. Wow. I mean, I know we can continue to go on and on and in this discussion, but I want to try to get into our conversation a little deeper. And uh, with that, I'd like to move on to our next slide. So when it comes to cultural and familial factors, you know, culture and family is important. 
And we also know that cultural and family, um, you know, there are certain factors that can contribute to the juggling act that are faced by many students, you know, cultural expectations, family obligations, as well as financial pressures can add to the existing pressure that already, you know, awaits many of our students. So it's important for students to recognize these factors and seek support from their families and communities through honest dialogue. And let's move on to our next slide. Now, let's talk about the snowball effect. Now, the snowball effect refers to the accumulation of stress and responsibilities over time, which can lead to a state of constant overwhelm and even burnout. Um, as students struggle to keep up with their commitments, the snowball effect can intensify stress, intensify anxiety, and potentially increase mental distress as well. Recognizing this pattern is crucial in order to break the cycle and prioritize self-care. Now, I'd like to ask uh, some of our other youth participants, when it comes to this snowballing effect of just really having a feeling of being overwhelmed, um, you know, I'd like to ask you, Joel, have you experienced that? And if so, what was that like for you? Yeah, um, I've definitely experienced it. I think everyone here has. Um, it's, it's something that we all go through and I think sometimes we don't really talk about it. And, you know, when we do feel a burnout or when we're going through a lot, it's because there's very high expectations from us, um, you know, with school, with family members, with friends and overall within ourselves. So, um, I think it's very important to, you know, take that time to relax and prioritize self-care. Very good. And, you know, how about you, Erica? I want to make sure I get you in on here as well. Like, you know, can you talk to me about just managing those commitments and feeling that stress? Like, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, definitely all of us have dealt with that snowball effect differently. Um, I think it's important that we recognize that we're going through like a snowball effect and not just like pushing our emotions or stress back. Because I think a lot of people have different activities within like family, school, but then like also just like real life, dealing with like um, different aspects of life and such. Um, I think it's really important that we find our way to self-care and also to take breaks and not just like move from one thing to another super fast. Because I think like quick transitions and just dealing with like busyness from like one part of life to another can deal with like a lot of stress and like piling up on ourselves, which eventually obviously leads to like burnout and stuff. Wonderful, thanks for that feedback. And, you know, I want to move on to our next slide, because as we talk about this here, um, you know, being able to find strategies for managing these commitments, you know, and I'd actually like to ask Luz, our, our you know, clinician here, um, what are some ways that youth can maybe find? I know you kind of talked about it earlier, but what are some tips that we might be able to share with some of our young folks that they might be able to manage their multiple commitments that they're experiencing? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, one of the things that we've noticed can be helpful, right, is to prioritize. So what needs to get done today, other stuff's still going to be there tomorrow. It can get done the next day, right? Um, so doing those lists, right, whether you like to do those online, on your phone, right, on your no app, or you really just want to write them down, check them off. Um, other thing is, right, we often say, like, block some time off in your calendar just for you, right? Your day, your schedule. Um, sometimes we really need to see that, right? That you have that time blocked off for you to do things that fill up your cup, whether that is, you know, um, maybe going for a walk or connecting with a friend, right? Things like that, making sure that we all have all these things to do, but that also that your cup is filled and that you're taking care of yourself. Um, putting things down in a calendar can definitely be helpful. Um, you know, some people like the Google calendar. You can do the colors and color code, things like that. That's your thing. Go for it. Other people are, you know, like their planner. You really want to like scratch things out, put some stickers. Mm -hmm whatnot, make it your own, right? I think you make it your own, there's more buy-in, right? Because you like it, so you're more likely to use it. Um, 
Other things I would say too is your people, right? Your support system. Like who are those? And make sure that we're talking to them. We're utilizing them. Because they're going to notice, right? Like, oh, maybe, you know, Susie's irritable. That's giving us a little tip, right? Hey, you know, maybe there's a lot going on. Um, so checking in on with your people, your friends, family, um, community, things like that. Those things can be helpful. Also, right, those those basic things that I talked about in the beginning that are hard, not so basic, like making sure you're sleeping, you're eating, you're moving your body, right? Lots of us sit all day. Um, school, you know, a lot of our work can sometimes be sitting. So make sure we get up, we go outside, we get some vitamin D. Vitamin D is so important and it'll shift. It'll literally shift the chemicals in your body. Uh, you're going to feel better. Um, so making sure we do some of those things, right? And that we're just checking in with ourselves too, like taking a moment just to be quiet and just checking in and see how are we doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, those are all just great tips. And I really appreciate you for sharing them. Um, and as we've just heard, you know, creating schedules, um, utilizing different productivity tools like calendars, um, to-do lists, you know, time management apps. I know me personally, I use timers. So I'll have like a 15 minute timer and I'll set it and I'll do one thing. And when that 15 minutes is up, I'll shift to do something else. And it's like, I may come back to that one thing or whatnot, depending upon, you know, how severe it needs to get done, or I might repeat the timer and continue to work on that one thing. But having that structured time frame kind of keeps me aware of what I need to do um, to help me manage those multiple commitments that I need to do so I can prioritize them and complete them effectively. Um, and, you know, as we're talking about this, one thing um, Monica brought up earlier, which was really, I think, really key is um, being able to communicate boundaries, you know, being able to talk to your friends, being able to let them know like, hey, I can't do it. Learning to say no, right? Having open and honest communication with your friends or even with your professors or your teachers or um, other family members, all of these, um, you know, folks will they'll respect it, you know, and being able to say no is is actually a very powerful thing. You know, there's huge power in that too little word. Um, so when you are approached with additional commitments, it's okay to just be honest and upfront about what you're dealing with, what you're handling, what you're carrying right now, um, you know, and explaining to them that you can't really, don't have the capacity to take on any more at this moment. Um, also being able to use confident body language, maintain that eye contact, um, speak in a firm and respectful tone to just get your message over is something that's really helpful and effective in letting folks know what you can and cannot do. So always, you know, be be okay with saying no. If you can't do something, you just can't do it, you know. Um, and that kind of segues to our next slide. You know, if you genuinely do want to help, um, but you know that you can't commit to a request, you might be able to suggest friends or someone else who might be able to, you know, do whatever it is that that person is asking of you. Or you might even be able to propose a different time when you are available um, you know, so that you can help out. So just being able to explain to other folks that you need to focus on your own priorities and your own responsibilities um, helps you to, you know, maintain that healthy balance. It helps you also to focus on your own self-care. So let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. So when we talk about the impact of stress, anxiety, and depression, you know, overwhelming responsibilities can have a significant impact on students' mental health. Chronic stress can lead to anxiety and depression, affecting both academic performance and overall well being. Now, it's important for students to be aware of the signs and symptoms of mental distress and to seek professional help when needed. Now, let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. Now, when it comes to seeking support, you know, many colleges and universities offer a host of resources to support students' mental health, whether it be counseling services, peer support groups, mental health awareness programs, all of which are available to help students navigate challenges. So I kind of want to ask some of our young folks here on the call um, if you guys can talk to me about what support looks like at your campus. And I want to 
really focus on those who are in high school, because I'm curious to know what's happening at El Cerrito. Uh, Lucy, can you talk to us about what's going on over there? What supports currently exist for students? So we have two resources, I would say. One of them is more college focused and the other is more mental health focused. We have the College and Career Center, which is just a place to like study and it has counselors who can help you through your academic turmoil. And then we have the James Morehouse Project, which is somewhere you can go when you're feeling anxious or stressed and you just need a place to chill out and just calm down. It's the perfect place to go. Um, I'm very lucky to be going to El Cerrito High. We have, a, like James Morehouse Project, project is amazing. They have counselors, quiet rooms. They have a whole health clinic. It's We're very lucky to have such a great resource at El Cerrito High. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And, you know, let me ask you, Erica, how, how um, does resources, you know, affect students over at Miraloma, Miraloma High School? Can you talk to me about what's going on there? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think Miraloma is really excellent in that regard, um, especially since we don't have a lot of room, like physical space for more resources. But with the space we have, we have a wing for, um, like Lucy was saying, we have a college and career center as well. Um, we have a lot of counseling offices that you can go in and you can just like talk to somebody. Um, but we also have like individual calming rooms as well. And then I think another cool thing about my school is that um, during breaks or lunch a lot, teachers always have their classroom open. Like a lot of people end up going to classrooms to eat, talk, catch up on anything. Um, and I think that's really important that the teachers show their support that way. They have their doors open. And as well, like in specific classes or in specific programs, they also like offer forms for feedback or chances to talk one-on-one -on -one to teachers if you have any problems. And I think that's all really helpful to um, show that welcoming and show that um, open attitude towards students who might be going through other things as well. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks for that. Um, both of you, I appreciate that feedback. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. So again, when we were talking about therapy and therapeutic options, you know, these are alternatives that are available in addition to some of those resources that we've already heard, right? So I'll talk about a few, but I definitely want to make sure I get Luz in here to give us some really great insight into the clinical perspective. But, um, you know, one example can be cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT, which is a widely used therapy that focuses on identifying and changing negative thought patterns and behaviors. Uh, it can help students develop coping strategies and challenge irrational beliefs, as well as learn effective problem-solving skills. Another option is mindfulness-based stress reduction, also known as MBSR, which combines mindfulness meditation, body awareness, and yoga to help individuals become more present and aware of their own thoughts and emotions. Now, this therapy can teach students to manage stress, improve focus, and cultivate self-compassion. And there's a couple more that I'd like to go on and talk about, um, another of which is solution-focused brief therapy, or SFBT, which is a goal-oriented therapy that focuses on finding solutions rather than dwelling on problems. Now, this option helps students identify their strengths, set achievable goals, and develop practical strategies to manage their commitments effectively. And another option is therapy. Now, group therapy specifically. Um, group therapy um, actually allows students to connect with others who are facing similar challenges. It provides a supportive environment where they can share experiences, learn from one another, and develop coping strategies together. Now, Luz, as our clinician, can you talk to us about the benefit of some of these options and how it can be advantageous for students to you know, take advantage of them? Yes, for sure. So group therapy is great. We know that often in community, we do healing, right? And so hearing other stories, really seeing how other people are putting it into practice can be very, very helpful. Um, you know, I think all therapy is great. Um, I'm a therapist, of course, I'm biased with that. But 
Um, CBT is great for behavior, right? Changing behavior. Um, if you like worksheets, if that is your thing, CBT is perfect for you. Um, it is standardized. And then solution focused, right, is very much about the goal. It's short term. Um, we often look at like, what would the perfect day look like in order to then get to the bottom, right? To like, what is your goal? Um, we often use that, like, what, what would your perfect day look like? Um, and we really walk you through that. A lot of all the therapies are great. The most important thing is that you have a good connection, right? A good connection with the therapist. If you have a good connection with them, that is really where the change is going to happen through that connection. Um, so it really just depends on you and you know what works best for you. If you like some structure, if it's a little bit more you know loose and able to have just maybe a more free forming conversation, right? Then you would go through a different modality. Um, but overall, right, it, it's just, it's that connection, right? That connection with the therapist is really yeah. what is going to guide you and then shift some of those behaviors. Yeah, no, thanks a lot for that. And I'm hearing you say connection. And in my mind, I'm thinking cultural competency, um, you know, making sure that therapists, you know, have the same understanding culturally. So can you elaborate about the importance and significance of cultural competency when we're talking about therapy or finding a therapist? Yeah, for sure. Well, it's important that you feel comfortable with your therapist, right? So you ask questions. It is okay if the first therapist maybe isn't for you. It's totally okay. There's lots of us, right? So um, lots of us to go around. It's important that you find someone that understands, right? Because culturally, what might be going on for you might be different. Um, and that that therapist has that curiosity, but also that understanding and empathy. Um, so, you know, just making sure that you have that feeling that you're comfortable, um, that you feel that you can be open and honest with them because really that's where the change is going to happen. Um, and so those are things like, right, it could be something um, about religion, right, or pronouns. It depends exactly what you're looking for, but just feeling okay with if that person isn't for you, then maybe we look for someone else, right? Um, someone sure. where you feel that feeling with. Wonderful. Yeah, no, thanks for all of that, that feedback. I really appreciate that. And, you know, I'm sure that that might be beneficial to someone in our audience today who might be listening in, you know, there are many therapists. So, you know, definitely shop around if need be. Um, but let's go ahead and keep going into our conversation a little bit further. And let's go on to our next slide. So we want to talk about self care, right? So self care tips and practices you know these are some of the things that were kind of mentioned already and we know it's important for youth to set aside time for self care uh, being able to explore arts through activities like painting drawing writing or playing a musical instrument those are all creative and healthy outlets to explore these outlets can provide a much needed break from that academic stress and allow students to express themselves freely um, you know, and going on to our next slide, this is what we kind of talked about earlier, you know, being able to just get outside, um, you know, being able to go outside, find a nearby park or some green space, trees, a lot of grass, what have you, um, you know, just being able to get out there and that vitamin D and soak it all up, you know, being able to play or sit or meditate or simply just enjoy the fresh air all of these things can give you a huge benefit to help clear your mind, uh, to alleviate some of the stress and pressure um, of all of the many things that you may be juggling or all of the many different commitments that currently exist in your life. You know, spending time in nature truly has been shown to reduce stress levels and improve overall well-being. And let's go ahead and go to our next slide. The importance of breaks. So definitely, I think, um, you know, I want to say it was uh, Lu Lucy talked to us about this, of taking a break of, from social media, right? Giving yourself a break from screen time or 
implementing a digital detox. You know, all of these things can certainly help you in your journey. Setting specific time, times each day or designating certain days of the week for just a screen-free period of time is definitely a huge benefit. Um, use this time to engage in those self-care activities or to nourish your mind, your body, such as reading books, practicing yoga, or just having conversations with friends. All of that can be helpful. Let's go ahead and move on. So we know college students often find themselves rushing through meals or relying on unhealthy convenience foods um, just because time is of the essence. So practicing mindful eating can help you reconnect with your body and nourish yourself in a more intentional way. Make sure that you take the time to savor each bite, pay attention to the flavors and the textures and listen to your body's hunger and fullness cues, trying not to overeat or making sure you get some food when you're actually hungry. By incorporating nutritious foods into your diet and making mealtime a mindful and enjoyable experience, it will certainly help you along your wellness journey as well. So with that, you know, I want to thank you all just for spending time with us today. Um, you know, thank you, Joel, for your contributions and being our youth mentor, providing some insight and wisdom. I want to thank you, Monica, as well. I want to thank you, Erica, and thank you, Lucy. And also want to give a huge thank you to Luz, our clinician, for providing that insight and analysis. I also want to thank you, our audience, for joining Into the Classroom, which is a production of Mental Health California. Please be sure to visit us at mentalhealthca.org. And if you'd like to access health and mental wellness topics for boys and men of color, please visit our signature initiative at brotherbewell.com. And while you're there, be free, feel free to subscribe to our blog. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative, which promotes access to mental health support. You can learn all about their program at bluesky.blueshieldca.com. With that, I'm your host, Conrad Crump. Until next time, take good care of yourselves. Oh.